Welcome to Passionate Reply, and welcome to Great Albums. This time I'll be discussing Communication by Carl Bartos, first release in 2003. Carl Bartos is undoubtedly most famous as one of the members of the classic lineup of Kraftwerk, and that's the kind of thing you don't easily live down as a music artist. But it must be said, Bartos has arguably done a more admirable job trying to than anybody could have expected. In 1991, he released his first new work after leaving Kraftwerk, Esperanto. Watch the wall on the screen. It is safe. It is clean. The satellite picture shows a lot of clouds around over Europe. Das Wetter. Das Wetter. Das Wetter. Esperanto is an album that feels like a dogged effort to do something bigger, better, and more contemporary than Kraftwerk did, but it also feels like it's constantly in the shadow of Bartos' Kraftwerk years and compelled to address it and react to it in various ways. It's a tension that continued to dominate much of Bartos' solo work. He comes across as someone who, despite his apparent maltreatment by other people in the group, still wants to believe in at least some of their grand ideas about music, though maybe not all of them. The emphasis on mechanized percussion, blasting synth, and samples and vocoders merging with more traditional singing makes it easy to hear a consonance between Esperanto and Bartos' earlier work, but the album's perspective on technology seems much more pessimistic. TV, in particular, presents us with a nightmarish yet familiar world in which people are pacified by overstimulating entertainment, including romanticized imagery of the past. Where craftwork tracks like Computer Love, Europe Endless, or The Telephone Call saw technology as a way to bring people together and help them understand each other, TV portrays it as a force to tear people apart and keep them misinformed. Communication is similarly concerned with technology, though it's much more of a concept album with a clear focus on the titular topic. Look at me. I'm the The most immediately striking quality about communication is the way that it sounds. There's a full and unrestrained quality to its hyper-digital instrumentation, which fully embraces the possibilities of music technology that continue to advance outside the walls of Kling Klong. I owned a copy of this album on CD back in the noughties, and much like many recordings from that era are accused of, it was extremely loud and sonically compressed. Many music critics are quick to disdain this era for its so-called loudness wars, and they might have a point when it comes to music made chiefly with traditional instruments. I don't listen to that stuff, so I have no opinion. 
But with communication, I think this effect actually works and adds a lot to the album. It's insistent, overbearing, and pushed to its limit in a way that feels like it might be intentional, even if it isn't. It makes sense that communication comes across as overwhelming because it's an album about the explosion of information technology happening at the time. The early era of the internet might seem quaint to us today, but it's worth remembering that it was still shocking to people at the time, and represented a huge leap forward in technology that affected people's daily lives very deeply. While a lot of works tackling this subject can come across as a bit simplistic or heavy-handed, communication skirts a lot of the put-your-phone-away-and-play-outside cliches of this genre. I'm the Message stands out for the way that it assumes the voice of, well, information itself. Kraftwerk did a number of songs from the perspective of machines, most notably the robots, but I'm the Message is both an homage to that style as well as a subversion of it. One that seems to suggest that in the 21st century, the physical devices that deliver information are less revolutionary than the glut of information itself. Look at me, implores the narrator, demanding of our attention in much the way that the onslaught of data might. Likewise, the track Screeching Hook seems designed to force us to listen. Another take on the alluring yet dangerous attraction of information is to be had on the camera. Somewhat similar in its premise and its heavy use of vocoder to convey the internality of the inanimate, the camera does at least return us to a physical object being personified. The threat presented in I'm the Message seems a bit vague. The narrator's insistence on our attention is ominous, but what consequences it has for us are unclear. The camera, however, is probably the most overtly moralistic track on the album, making it clear the reliance on staged images of the world around us rots our relationship with reality. Hence, the camera becomes one's best friend. It's a message that's only more relevant now than it was in 2003, in a world where everything from social media updates to pornography feels increasingly fake and out of touch with what's real. Other tracks on communication shift the focus more towards the effects of information overload rather than its mechanism of action, as in 15 Minutes of Fame.
15 minutes of fame, we hear Bartos' real voice for a change, and it seems like a nice fit given the song's emphasis on human beings rather than machines. However, we are also talking about celebrities, who in this day and age are people who tend to be experienced through mechanical reproduction of their image, thoughts, and actions. Is there not something ironic in the notion of a relatively famous person performing a catchy pop song all about the short-sighted, petty, and fickle nature of stardom? I think it's no coincidence that 15 Minutes of Fame is arguably the most accessible and pop-oriented of any of the tracks in communication. Despite Bartos's somewhat deserved reputation as the member of Kraftwerk who brought the most pop sensibility to the group, this album is mostly full of grating, distorted soundscapes that call to mind radioactivity above all else. Does 50 Minutes of Fame represent a genuine rejection of celebrity from Bartos, or is it perhaps an expression of sour grapes that all these decades later he knew he'd come short of being a household name? It's hard not to think that there isn't at least a little something personal or confessional in this song. And the same is true of its other, more pop-oriented cut, Life. According to the rules, forget my name Maybe it will help you feeling cool I have to move out, got to carry on Don't you know that only time will tell If I'm right or wrong, so glad we made it Life is arguably even more of a pop song than 50 Minutes of Fame is, packing an equally memorable hook as well as the more affable subject of a romantic relationship. 50 Minutes of Fame has a sneering or condescending feel to it, coming across as not only dismissive but perhaps even legitimately bitter. Life has a certain negativity to it since it is a breakup song, but it also comes at the subject with a certain sense of hope. The narrator is the one leaving the relationship and moving on to greener pastures, and in that sense it's somewhat triumphant. Even the fact that the title is Life seems suggestive of a glass-half-full approach, and an emphasis on the new life to come and not the losses of the past. However, while it may appear to be a fairly straightforward breakup song on the surface, Life also has a hidden meaning that will stand out to some of the more astute fans of Kraftwerk. The breakup can be interpreted as not a romantic one, but rather the one that occurred between Bartos and the rest of the band. There are a few hints to be had, but perhaps the clearest one is the reference to the narrator's name being forgotten. Kraftwerk frontman Ralf Hüter famously flubbed this in an interview and referred to Carl Bartos as Klaus. Ouch. On the cover of Communication, we encounter some of the most familiar glyphs of everyday life in the modern world. Symbols for a pedestrian crosswalk, a public telephone, a handheld camera, and an aeroplane. Rendered in the familiar Swiss style made popular throughout the world in the mid-century. Presented in a simple black and white color palette, the cover is almost prosaic in its portrayal of these signs. Two of them, the phone and the camera, are clearly tools of information technology, and it's directly related to the album's central theme. But the other two, the pedestrian and the plane, relate to transportation, which is not really referenced in the music. While transportation was a major theme in the oeuvre of Kraftwerk, they were most famous for portraying automobiles and locomotives, and the two modes of transportation referenced by communication are conspicuously absent from anything of Kraftwerk's. Conversely, the camera gets its own track on this album, as discussed earlier, and the telephone call was one of the most clearly Bartos-driven compositions to be published under the Kraftwerk name. While Carl Bartos' solo career has given us many more new compositions than any of his fellow music workers from Kraftwerk, he really hasn't been that prolific an artist in the grander scheme of things. Since the 2003 release of Communication, he's only released one additional album, 2013's Off the Record. 
It's probably my overall favorite work of his, moving away from the concept album feel of communication in most Kraftwerk albums, and projecting a more pop-oriented feel without completely abandoning an interest in electrifying experimentation. While I think Off the Record is a masterpiece on its own terms, it still retains a sense that Bartos is continually haunted by his Kraftwerk past, most notably on Without a Trace of Emotion. favorite track on communication is Electronic Ape Man. It's a bit of an oddball and a track that certainly grew on me with repeated listens. Besides combining elements of the album's more pop half with a strong sense of the ostentatiously weird, it also stands out for its perspective. Electronic Ape Man seems uniquely concerned with those who feel left behind by ongoing technological progress, a process that the song insists occurs while we're doing other things, and hence can sneak up on us when we aren't prepared. Is it an expression of sympathy for others, or perhaps a confession of Bartos' own feelings about living in a future that even Kraftwerk couldn't have imagined? That's everything for today. Thanks for listening. Thank you.